Folks, thanks for joining us today. My name is John Dubas with Premier Marketing. We'll be spending the next 45 minutes to an hour or so discussing the paradigm shift in our industry, a change in the way that we do business, the way we operate day to day, and how that is going to integrate into our future marketing activities and how we are going to enable ourselves to negotiate this new normal, particularly in the Medicare market. Today's presentation is being recorded and it, a link to that recording and material that we referenced through the course of the presentation will be sent to everyone by email who have RSVP'd for today's presentation. A bit of housekeeping, you'll note in the software package that enables us to share this information, kind of appropriate for today's topic, there's a section in there for questions. If you would, put your questions in that section and we may find that we address them through the course of the presentation, but we will make certain that we address them at least at the end to make certain that we answer uh, all the inquiries that are out there on today's topic. A bit of additional level set about our organization. Premier Marketing is a national marketing organization founded in 1968, part of the Integrity Marketing Platform with offices across the country. We act as an insurance service wholesaler, uh, working with independent insurance agents such as yourself to provide coverage to the public. And we do so through contracts at the highest possible commission levels with recruiting contracts available to those who qualify. That approach is part of an overall package of product that available to you through Premier Marketing and includes the Medicare programs, the Medicare Advantage, Medicare Supplement, Part D prescription drug programs, life insurance and annuity products, final expense life insurance, pre-need plans, long and short-term care programs, disability income plans, and ancillary benefits that include dental vision hearing plans, critical illness, cancer programs, hospital indemnity, accident, and telehealth programs. We look at the portfolio as a whole, a vital part of today's presentation, because for each of these to be effective, we need to be able to pivot from a face-to-face -to, -face to a virtual type of presentation throughout the process, and that includes contracting all the way through the different sales that are available with the portfolio. When we look at our Medicare Advantage offerings, we have the national carriers in there for you with many of the strong regional carriers to help you in your particular market. And that same philosophy carries over into the standalone prescription drug plans where the national carriers are there for you through our organization. In the Medicare supplement world, it's a very robust portfolio that offers a lot of differing types of support that mirror some of the brethren on the other side of basic Medicare coverage in the Medicare Advantage and PDP world, but this also gives some additional latitude for support to process and market these or these types of programs as well through the different assistance programs that we have in place for you. That assistance program, well, it can vary from program to program, carrier to carrier, with some of the support that they offer, but when we speak of the ancillary products, we see a category that has the national leaders in each of those subsets, but also gives you the opportunity to additionally market electronically and all the way through the sales process, do things in a virtual world, but also have the ability to make certain that those face-to-face -face appointments that will remain as part of a marketing structure into the future are there for you as well. So these can act not only as additional coverage for your prospects and clients that they obviously need, but also an additional means of creating revenue for you and your agency and to drive persistency in your market. When we look at Medicare market overall, obviously it's a burgeoning market. Uh, programs like today like to speak to the turning 65 market, the aging of the baby boomers, the silver tsunami, one every 10 seconds, 10,000 people a day. But if we look at things based just on age, we're missing some things because there are folks out there that regardless of how you approach them, they're not accessing their Medicare benefits immediately at the age of 65 for one reason or another. Um, but that change in the overall number of people that are eligible for our help within the Medicare population is more than picked up by the 
between one sixth to one seventh of the Medicare population that's under the age of 65 medically disabled and accessing their benefits in that manner. So we need to have programs in play that address the very background of our audience, the folks that really need our help, because two thirds of them, the folks that are on Medicare, have three plus chronic conditions and they have some challenges sometimes with their wallet, the income and assets may be short in certain areas. And this then gives us a unique challenge when we speak to addressing the new normal because these folks, well, they may not have some of the same access electronically as some of the others. So we need to work through different programs to make certain that we can serve the entire population, not only with the product they need, but with the approach that is paramount to success in reaching the population. They've got choices. They don't have to take Part B, most people do. Some will add on just a Part D program to get drug coverage. Some folks will help take care of the shortfall in the medical expenses through a standardized, modernized Medigap, Medicare supplement policy, or enter into a membership with the Part C programs, the Medicare Advantage plans, to bundle the package, so to speak. In each of these areas, we need not only the product to address that need, but also the systems in place to find these individuals and help walk them through the process for coverage uh, that is most suitable for their circumstance. What is that? Well, we're seeing pretty even split when people come on Medicare. Notice I didn't say age in because we have a number of other categories in play there. Some folks that chose to defer, as we noted before, but it's a pretty even split between Medicare Advantage and MedSup plans. And in those circumstances, we need to make certain that we have systems to help them process their choice as well. When we look at the original Medicare category, that can be made up of folks with, yeah, just original Medicare, but it may also be the Medi-Medis, the folks with dual beneficiaries with Medicare and Medicaid coverage, and maybe folks accessing care through the VA. It may be folks that are um, covered through group insurance. So there are different ways and means of people accessing their benefits. We need to be able to pivot and approach them no matter what their background is. And sometimes that relies upon a little bit of translation. So one of the things that you'll see as follow up to today's presentation is a link to an acronym guide that can make certain for you that you're properly communicating with your individuals. We find it very easy to fall into a vernacular that we use all the time. And we need to realize that much as when we discuss different options with you as agents, you have a similar need to translate that information into something that your prospects and clients understand, which can help you with that. Why are we talking about this now with, uh, gee, we're in third month, OEP is almost over. Uh, don't ever, doesn't everybody take care of this during AEP? Not necessarily. Uh, we have the opportunity through some of the different programs to reach out and touch people that didn't make a choice annually. Over half of them don't compare or even review their coverages on an annual basis, 57% of them, according to the Kaiser Family Foundation. And that means the different enrollment periods, election periods that came into play, well, they're not taking advantage of any of them. And to be honest, the way that we can and cannot market OEP as agents per compliance guidelines, not compared to the calls you get or I get or on TV, uh, it's important for us then to make certain that we look at the special election periods that are a viable way of marketing to the population and make certain that we handle OEP correctly, but that we also take advantage of the other ways that we normally visit with people anyway. And this gives us then an opportunity to bring in those extra special election periods that may come about because of weather or for whatever other reason that gives people in a particular area additional time to make decisions or additional choices. And because this population is particularly vulnerable and we can reach out to them in a number of fashion, we can then help that portion that really not only hasn't evaluated their programs, but don't seem to be uh, inclined to do so unless they have help. And that includes a big 
bunch, a bunch of the folks that are older, lower income, uh, lower education levels, and fair or poor health, those folks that are kind of in the wheelhouse for some of the folks that we are marketing to anyway, we're looking for DSNPs, dual special need plans. We're looking for chronic special needs programs. We're out there giving them information about entitlement programs such as the low income subsidy or Medicare savings programs that really affects this target market. And it gives us another opportunity to explain programs that may be confusing them and they're not using the, the information that's out there provided by the government. So we can take our ways of making certain they have the information they need to evaluate their programs, since over half of them haven't, and we're doing so in a fashion that is conducive to good business and good health as well. Remember, more, ho more policies you have in a household, the better off you are when it comes to retention and persistency and are going through and doing evaluations and presentations, be they live face-to-face -face or vir live virtually, we're going to make certain that we're taking care of those folks across the board. So when we look at negotiating the new normal for the Medicare market, what are we talking about? Well, for part of it, if we've been in this business for a period of time prior to this last year, we're like cattle in a pasture, kind of. We're walking the same path. We're doing a lot of the same things over and over and over. And many times that's because does well hey it's effective it's working pandemic hits things change and so for a while there was a period where many people were like oh boy what am i going to do next this is terrible i can't work that sort of thing and you realize in many circumstances if you can embrace the technology that is available to you uh well caterpillar becomes the beautiful butterfly and it's a question of embracing the change and seeing if we're going to use it to our advantage. Because you ever notice that if you have a fish bowl, you got a bunch of fish in it, and you have another bowl, same kind of fish, but more room to move, different ways of expanding your propinquity, if we put it that way, it's a great growing experience, and it's a brand new opportunity for us as well. And you think about it, this is kind of a cool quote I ran across that basically, you know, right at the beginning of the 1600s, the plague had destroyed London's uh, entertainment uh, avenues, so to speak, and it created a lot of unemployment, and it also created an opportunity for William Shakespeare to come up with some of the greatest prose in the English language, whether it's him or one of his underlings, whatever. A great opportunity came out of a tragedy, and so we're looking to see how we can incorporate in in-person versus virtual marketing all the way through the system. Now keep in mind today's presentation will be somewhat rudimentary for some folks because we don't go into extra picky detail on a lot of the campaigns that might give you a great framework to set up a program integrating technology into your systems and give you that opportunity of is it going to be live or is it going to be memory? so to speak. So you have that in-person versus virtual presentation available. And let's face it, the population is a heck of a lot more receptive to it than it's ever been and are becoming much more adept at using it, including the senior population, which is a lot of the folks we speak to day in and day out. It's being assisted by the folks that are delivering the care. So many of you that went to the doctor over the last year, I can say this honestly for myself, I went to the doctor a bunch of times, but in many circumstances, not live. It was all over the smartphone or other as different device. So we have the providers of the care of the programs that we're offering actually delivering many of those services virtually themselves. And so they're helping to train the population that we visit. It's interesting to see how many people say that that will be a valued part of their accessing care in the future as well. And it goes beyond doctors. The dentists are even using part of this technology, helping train the population to respond to uh, the care that is being delivered by doctors and dentists. We see it actually in the faith-based community as well, where 
for the longest period of time, depending upon the state you had and the restrictions that were available or placed upon you, um, you were attending services virtually. And so it's come in to be a vital part of our lives in many different aspects, and that includes prospecting. And I wondered where I was going with that goofy cartoon, didn't you? Well, one of the things that w that same sort of technology has done is it not only helped train the population to receive that care and be open to the technology, but also opened up avenues for us to use to reach out to visit that population itself. And one of the first things that comes to mind, of course, is the, the lovely world of social media. It's pretty inexpensive. You don't rent the contact or, or your content, you own it. It's a pretty level playing field because if you're purchasing ads on Facebook or putting information out there on Instagram or however it is, you've got a pretty level playing field. It's the same opportunity for anyone else. It depends upon who is doing it in a fashion that can deliver results. And let's face it, 70% of the people in the United States are active Facebook users. So pretty good portion of the population that you can reach through that medium as well. And it gives us the opportunity to do things um, very fluidly, inexpensively, as we mentioned before, but it also gives us the opportunity to change that material very easily. So if you look at it and you speak to one of the tried and true means of reaching out to the population through direct mail, once the mail's out, you can't change the letter that's in it. With these types of programs, obviously, you have the ability to tweak your approach, and you can do so by eliciting the information from your audience themselves by asking questions, running polls, starting discussions, uh, seeding the conversations that you see in many of the outreach material that's out there. And you can change it as you go along. So that same piece can be a skeleton that you fill in with musculature at different points throughout the year. Some of the things that are important for us to distinguish right off the bat is the fact that, well, 270 million users on social media in the United States alone, a third of which are from the baby boomer generation, we've got over 80 million people using social media. Does that mean they're all on Medicare? No. But many of them are influencers in that decision, and many of them are on Medicare, and we can do so uh, an outreach in the same lines as the big hitters. You got to realize two thirds of the Fortune 500 companies are on social media. Some of them are very, very adept at using it. And many of the most successful business leaders are out there as well. So you see a ton of information from the insurance companies. Many of them put out some really cool information that we're going to leverage. And we'll talk about that in just a little bit. But it also has a lot of the, the influencers out there. So some of the different business leaders, be they in the community, uh, out in the private community, or those in the public uh, that are looking to serve us through elective offices as well. It's also important to note that much of the same compliance requirements that we have in print material, well, it follows into social media as well. And if you speak directly about a carrier, and you're using their logo, well, you better have permission. And we need to make certain that you are aware of the different social media policies of the companies that you represent and are putting in front of the public. Keep in mind, there are categories of insurance out there uh, with different advocates that can help us as well. So the National Council on Aging puts out great material. Um, the organizations out there for the different foundations for health uh, conditions, American Heart, American Cancer, Arthritis, Society, all those different organizations that can be very helpful as part of our social media because we can utilize those in a general fashion, start discussions, and create an interest in what we're offering simply by using much of the material that's already out there. We don't have to necessarily reinvent the wheel. So let's look at some of the more common or more widely used social media platforms. I don't pretend to say that this is all of them that are out there. I don't pretend to say that this is what you should use, just these, these particular platforms. But these are the ones that have a established audience 
and are great tools for us to leverage in our interest uh, and what we're looking to do. So depending upon what your approach is, you know, Facebook, boy, yeah, uh, a lot of the younger people will say that's an old person's platform. It's me then. It fits a lot of the uh, the audience that we're looking to reach out to as well. LinkedIn perhaps being a little more professional. Twitter a little shorter in its uh, messaging capability. YouTube, well, a lot of video, obviously. Um, so there are different things that we can do and utilize the audience in each of these categories, mine for the folks that we're looking to reach out to, and we do so through a platform of information we make available, as I referenced before, from different sources. It's also a circumstance that if you're using this as part of your marketing program, look at the other things that you're emphasizing as part of that plan that you put together to be successful this year. And then think of the dollars that are available as part of your marketing budget and create a program that integrates in the social media aspect of reaching the population that you're looking for. And it gives you then some of the same ideas that you've used for your other marketing uh, techniques throughout your work history, in a manner of speaking. You create that plan and you utilize not only the overall uh, structure that you have already in place to market properly, but you integrate in the different pieces that utilize social media as another way of reaching your audience. You're not putting all your eggs in one basket, in one basket but you're setting up goals to become educational uh, to your prospects and your clients, create leads off of that education and interest that you're putting out there. If you have a website, you're using it to drive traffic there as well. It's interesting how many companies now create and make use of a microsite that's specifically yours to do business with them. And it's not just ancillary product. Any longer, you see a lot of the MA uh, companies that are doing that as well. It's a great way then to create some of the additional lead flow that you do through the old fashioned way of shaking hands and kissing babies by increasing the traffic that is there virtually and creating an opportunity for customer for referrals right through that system that you set up to not only market but enroll people into your programs. So you're using that as part of an overall calendar and you know how to keep the information fresh and out there and coordinated with your other marketing activities. So once you've got that different piece in play, you've created a program, you've looked to see, gee, this month is is what, featuring what? Uh, you know, holidays make an obvious uh, way of reaching out to different individuals. This week has been pretty green with a whole bunch of St. Patty Days or St. Patrick's Days information out there. It gives you then an opportunity to pull additional memes of sort, different messaging that come out as part of your emphasis on that event for that month or for whatever time period it happens to be. It gives you then also the opportunity to fill in those hooks of information with material that's specific to you and your agency the, through seminars or enrollment programs that you may already have in place that you can pivot into an electronic system. And it's important then that in order to make certain that we're pulling a proper audience, we're using keyword, keywords, buzzwords that help you set up your profile, help you create a path to you and what you do. And there are obviously the, the different flash words, the buzzwords out there that help people find you in that circumstance as they're out there on the web looking for help. So you're planting seeds through this plan and you can do so in a couple of different ways. You can build the platform yourself or you can buy uh, the, the end result as well. But keep this in mind that whichever way you go, just because you build it doesn't mean it will necessarily come. To paraphrase uh, that line out of a movie because they got to know that you're there. Having a house in the desert, uh, you got to water it. You got to get people to come. You got to make certain that it's going to be effective to you. And there are programs out there that can help you do that through multiple media. So 
for example, Hootsuite, when you have an opportunity after this call, Google it, and you'll see how this system, a free version of it, will allow you to post the same type of messaging on up to three different social profiles at the same time. So you're tripling your work by using a system, a program out there that allows you to schedule your post, post multiple sites at the same time. So there are a way uh, then of basically tripling your work effort without doing anything additional. There are paid options, of course, that can help you do even more with it, but it's a great starting point for folks that haven't been active on different pieces of social media, particularly multiple pieces of social media, different engines out there that are able to drive business to you through their use. What we have also are campaigns that we're doing that for you as well. So when we talk about you buy it or you build it, well, we have a, a Facebook campaign out there that speaks to the uh, final expansion Medicare audience through Facebook. And there are ways then that you can uh, set up that program and create those leads to come back to yourself, buy them, without having to do the whole thing all by yourself. It also gives you then the opportunity to make certain that you're doing some things uh, properly because these systems do have different qualifiers for you as to how you can use that. So if you're buying ads on Facebook, well, you got to set up a business account to do so. If you are working um, to grow an agency, perhaps to recruit or prospecting through LinkedIn, they have different programs that you can purchase and they'll do it for you. So different things that can come into play that give you an opportunity to either create your own material and do it yourself or hire on help to help you do it. And that's why using these programs, integrating them into your overall marketing program does have obviously a direct bearing upon the budget that you have uh, to market as well. So how do you identify how you're gonna reach out to some of these folks and make certain that they are there for you? Well, consider it's like everything. There's the 80-20 rule. 20% 20 of the clients will make up 80% of the business. So look at the different things that they have in common the things that they would respond to. Utilize the data that is out there and drill down to different programs that are of particular interest to people in different areas. And keep in mind how someone operates as an agent assisting traditional, shall we put it that way, Medicare beneficiaries, the 65 plus. Well, it's gonna be different than the approach that you would use if you're working the under 65 market in Texas. So you can run different messages at the same time, obviously, but realize that the results that you'll get will depend upon how accurately you're reaching the audience that you're out there, out there to pursue in the first place. And a great way to do that is to run surveys or ask questions as well. So that might be a part of your overall social media program, running surveys saying, these are the, the products that we see of most interest, of great interest to people in this state, in this category, this whatever, which of these are of interest to you? And how would you like us to get you additional information? So it's a great way then of reaching a solid interest base. So a lot of times folks in different marketing programs will come by a booth at a health fair just to pick up a pen. There are folks that will respond to a mailer just to get a free calendar or whatever wherever it happens to be. We want genuine interest in what we're doing, not in some of the shtick that we're using to give it away. And so we need then to make certain that we're getting that information out there. Once we've established some of our websites and the messaging that goes out there, the branding that we want to create, how do we get that info out there? You will look at some of the different email that is available, the delivery systems, and you'll see that many of them work hand in hand with different uh, CRMs that you have and the way that you can utilize and outsource that if you choose to do so by utilizing some of these different programs that are available to feed on the information that you want to put out in front of the public and utilize some of the detail that you've created already to help that along. 
It's also important to note that much like a face-to-face -face sales presentation, we need to make certain that folks are not only influenced by what we're putting out there, but also basically know it without us hitting them over the head with it. We don't have to say, hey, I'm your life insurance agent and I'm selling, you buying? Hey, some folks might like that approach because it's really direct. And if somebody's responding, they're wanting some insurance for one reason or another. So we can do that approach, but we can be subtle as well, build our brand. And it's amazing how many different pieces out there on social media will post a picture of a cat or a dog or a fainting goat, whatever it happens to be, it has nothing to do with the message. It's a picture to draw attention, and it's actually a fairly effective a technique. So we can help expand upon some of the basic general interest that's being uh, revealed to us, basically, by doing the things we do in a normal sales presentation. Ask open-end questions, fill in the blank, solicit those opinions, and respond to those questions as quickly as possible. And we also need to make certain that folks realize we're not necessarily just chasing them down like a dog in the street, because most of them are not on social media to be sold something, but the information we can provide can create that interest in our products and create that sales presentation. It's also important to note when we talked a little bit earlier about four of the common different platforms that are out there, some of them work better with different material, uh, frankly said. You know, there are some that will really be more successful if you use the hashtags like Twitter. Um, it's a shorter message. It's also something that where some of them are image heavy. And obviously, if we're going to do things on a YouTube channel, it's video. So how do we create that material and be successful in it? Because it it's a variance. You can have really short little pieces on there, or you can do an expansive uh, explanation of a product type, a carrier, whatever, and put it out on uh, the different pieces there, and how do we make that effective? Because if you make too long a video, it can screw up on Instagram. Um, there are different ways that you have to post it on Facebook, or Facebook, and then, of course, YouTube. Run that baby as long as you want, I guess. It depends on uh, the the old adage, the mind can absorb what the butt can endure in that instance. We need to make certain that that message, however we're delivering it, as part of our calendar through the different platforms we're using, we know what we're talking about, we're keeping it consistent, and that it's not expensive. However, the content's pretty much permanent once it's out there. It's Pandora's box. You put it out on the different social media, it's got the potential to live forever. It's got the potential to go viral. It's got the potential just to sit there like a lump on a log. It depends on how effective we are in delivering that message. And that, in many cases, have, has a bearing based on how authentic we are. We are what we are. The spots are, are on the cheetah, and that's just the way it works. We can use the, our knowledge base and deliver it in the fashion that we do day to day anyway and just spread it through the different pieces that are out there. When I mentioned before that we don't have to come up with all the material for our social media campaigns ourselves for the outreach, keep in mind the organizations that you contract through, the companies that are out there uh, that are part of your portfolio, the folks that are out there in the segments of uh, the industry that you work in, they have articles that you're using as well, and you can share those articles and not exactly hijack them as part of your overall campaign, even though, yeah, we're kind of doing that. We're pulling the information from these other people, uh, organizations and whatnot, that give us an opportunity to fill in that skeleton of our own campaigns and do so um, without having to reinvent the wheel. And some of them have really good programs that are already out there that we can utilize and we can personalize. It's amazing how many carriers within this last year have all of a sudden become very aware of the fact that the, the message we're putting out there needs to be flexible enough that we can do it hard copy or electronically. And obviously, if we're doing it um, electronically, we have a lot of latitude when it comes to 
creating it simply, delivering that message in a cost-effective manner, doing so with the opportunity to tweak it down the road. And if we're doing some things on a live basis still, we can take that experience and translate it into the virtual world as well. How do people know what's going on in many circumstances? Well, they're looking all different ways of doing it. They don't open their mail all the time. They don't open their email all the time. Not everybody's seeing every post that's out there, but it's amazing how social media gets the word into the community. And by utilizing a link between the face-to-face -face and virtual world, we're utilizing some of the same material, being effective with it, but delivering it in different fashions. And it also gives us an opportunity then that we can also create information on our own to create a blog, uh, point out interest on a posted article that's out there that you shared to make certain that folks realize that this is how this pertains to me and how we can make it work because it's also a way for you then to be integrated into that individual's life. They become comfortable with you. They feel they know you even though you may not have met them at all or just a few times. And there are a ton of the feel-good messages out there, many of them put out by the carriers. Humana does a great job with it. Zig Ziegler does some really cool things. Success.com, different places that are there that enable you to share their material and how it reflects upon you as well. It then also gives you the opportunity to be yourself because there are a multitude of different sources out there. For those of us with a little bit of a warped sense of humor, Obviously, you can bring that into play, and the impact of this is of a manner that, hey, they're going to remember you. As long as you're not being too bloody goofy, as I have to be careful with, we want to make certain that uh, if we're integrating into humor, we're doing so where it's still a professional manner, but it gives us then the opportunity to help us ask for, help me, share the message, like, comment, share. Um, on a corporate basis, we hear that all the time where people are saying, hey, don't forget to go out there and like and comment and share on our post. That gives you not only an opportunity to ingratiate yourself with the folks that you're sharing that material from, but also fill in a portion of your marketing campaign as well. This is one of the pieces that, you know, it's a great way for you to create an image in the community as well because there are so many valued and valuable uh, causes out there associating with them, not only helps reveal who we are, but it's a great way to bring up to our targeted audience that we are aware of the need in a particular segment of the community and how we're looking to address our involvement in it. February, big month for uh, where red for women or American Heart Association. But an underserved portion of our population, be they um, women or a particular ethnic group or whatever that's underserved, this is a great way for us to go through and get the message out of, here's who we are, this is why it's important to us, and it's important for you to realize that we have means to help you in these different areas. So. Take that information and realize that how am I going to take all this material, create that different uh, plan that puts in place, and how am I going to then uh, utilize it on the different platforms? Well, when you look at Facebook, remember, as we mentioned before, Facebook's a social media platform, obviously. That's the intent of most of the people on there. They're not going on it, obviously, to read the ads. You watch a long video, you got it interrupted by three or four paid sponsored ads. Doesn't matter if you're interested in that sponsor, what the sponsor's offering, otherwise it can be a bit of annoying. But each of those ads, well, you got to have a business platform, a business account to purchase those ads and make them resonate with your audience. You can do a number of different things through other tools that are free for you as well. You got a Google account, you can create a free blog. It's really simple. Take my word for it, I have one, but I use it 
as part of a storage for much of the material that I can't read every day. So I have an opportunity to store it, share it with the public, and go back and search through it and make it work. These blogs can be an integrated or an in integral part of an email campaign, a way to publicize your website, um, basically drive up your SEO rankings by using keywords in that blog or some of the material that you're putting in it, and it can make a big difference. So if you've got that website, it's a great way, a blog is, to call attention to that site. It's a great way for you because you can tweak the title even of the blog and the URL, the address that's necessary for them to reach it. And you can do that through what you choose blogspot.com. Really cool way of just laying it out there and this is who we are. And then use that to create content, um, for uh, create a reason why people want to speak with you as opposed to um, Harvey, my car insurance guy, who, uh, yeah, he sells me, he's got life insurance there too. We, we haven't bought any, but I know he has some. So different things that you can use to, to basically help people realize, hey, that's what I do. And that's what I want you to be aware of. And here's some of the things that can be important um, for you in that decision-making process and to fully utilize your choice through some of the material I have on my blog. We talked about creating that plan. Create also a checklist to make certain that you're maximizing the value of your of your activity. Keep in mind, you want to make certain that those keywords that are out there that are pertinent to your section of the insurance world, be it general, broad, or specific, um, we're using the keywords that can help drive that type of traffic. We want to make certain that we've created that Facebook profile personal and business page to make it work. Um, we've got our Google account set up to integrate some of the different pieces to drive through things. Um, we're on LinkedIn to, to access that as well. And then we're finding and following other organizations that are important to us. Hey, hopefully, as a contracting marketing organization with you, you're finding and following our information. You're checking in our, on our YouTube channel for recordings of presentations such as this as well. And as you do that, you get a lot of synergy created in that circumstance then um, where you're liking and following each other's information. So you are utilizing a synergistic effort to drive business across the board. It's also important to note that, hey, you don't have to have the whole plane created before you fly it. It's that scary adage of, of building it while you fly but there are some basics that you can get underway so it's you eliminate that round to it type of excuse. Uh, just creating some of the basics and taking that first step. When we speak with some of our experts across the industry, and fortunate, we're fortunate here at Premier Marketing to be able to access some of the integrity uh, marketing resources, including access to Thomas Arts, uh, a marketing company, they speak to the things that we can do to drive our own business. We're all in the same boat, just kind of a different shade of lipstick on the pig. And they really stress the fact that content's king. What are we putting out there that is of value to the people that we're conversing with? And so it's important that we, well, we're posting relevant, pertinent, and personal information. We're taking the material that's out there and we're saying, hey, this is how this applies to me. This is how it can apply to you. And then you're creating um, that opportunity to discuss specifics with those individuals by using the material. And keep in mind, it's not just what we're putting in the bucket. We gotta have the structure in place that's helping us maintain as much of that interest as possible as well. So we're looking at a number of different avenues to reach out to the individuals and we're tying them together all part of that overall marketing program where we are touching people in the way they want to respond. That did not sound good, but you know what I mean. In this way, there are folks out there that we're seeing the response rates on emails drop, but many people then are using a text follow-up. We see folks out there that aren't answering the phone. Many of them are, but there are programs out there that will also send a text follow-up to that, or we're doing a great job in an elevator speech 
on any type of message that we're leaving through that source of communication. It's amazing how many people now will respond to a text where they won't respond to the, the phone ringing or through other ways of reaching out to touch you. So having that integrated program includes not just one avenue, but different ways of reaching out uh, and communicating and making certain that we are talking to folks in the fashion that they want to be spoken with you. So many of you, if you don't have a newsletter, it's something that I strongly recommend that you begin to uh, do. In many of the circumstances, you have the electronic contact information from them if you're going through and you're actually collecting it when you're doing an application like they ask, ask you to in many circumstances. So it's a great way then to create a way of staying in front of the individuals so they recognize your name, they realize you haven't forgotten about it. It's another way for you to deliver pertinent material too. And there are different templates out there that it's basically plug and play with some of the information. Yeah, it takes a little time, particularly at first, once you have it set up and you can swap out detail, boy, it's a great way of staying in front of your people. So social media does a number of different things for you, a way of reaching out to folks through the different platforms, but it also gives you the opportunity that, boom, when you have that new idea, I can pivot, I can create, I can adapt, I can mutate, whatever you want to say, a great way of putting through additional information in a different fashion all part of a regular program because you've also dialed in flexibility. And once again, there are different community tools out there that you can use to publicize what you do. The benefits checkup program that are hand in hand partners with many of the different carriers out there have different pieces of material that you can reach a population that you may be targeting particularly. Or by offering that sort of detail and support, it's also giving you access to other material that can help them in different ways that establishes you as a subject matter expert in an area with individuals or in different categories. And you can do so by utilizing, once again, material that's already out there. You don't have to recreate it. You just have to have access to it and go through and speak to the different topics that are of interest to them. As we Enter into the latter part of the first quarter of the year. There are many folks now that are, boy, they're either that drug program I got into that didn't work or um, I'm running out of medication coverage. All within the same category, you've got different avenues to pursue and give solutions to the public that you're reaching that differentiate you from everyone else in the market. And that might include talking about some different topics that don't immediately generate commission dollars. It does, however, generate interest, word of mouth, and that may be more profitable for you than a singular policy that you might sell off of perhaps one direct mailer response. It gives the folks in the community the opportunity to speak to you and reach out in mass. And you can use the different tools that are available on the government then to help do the analysis for them. Uh, walking them through Medicare.gov, we saw earlier that, hey, a whole bunch of the folks that have access to this aren't using it. A remedial tutorial on basically how to use Medicare.gov, setting up your account, is a great piece for you to record and put out there with your name, your face, your voice on it. If that's something that you're interested in and a category that, hey, I'm not comfortable creating a lot of it, well, perhaps we can help you in that area as well because we also make available to you the different tools that if we speak to you about them and how valuable they are in that process for you and your prospects and clients, you're relaying that same information, be it in our voice or your own, can then once again establish how easy it is to do business with you with the people that are responding to your outreach. So some of the other things we're going to do at, at Premier to help you is, well, make certain that you have the product there to deliver upon the promises that you're uh, saying on the different outreach. So you write a check, better be able to cash it. This is one way to make certain that you can create an agent profile, put all your information in there, and have at your fingertips multiple organizations to fulfill a particular need. 
If you're speaking about dental programs, well, you can go into this, create a program, and contract with dental companies electronically. You don't have to do it all at once. It's the old eat the elephant a bite at a time. Create that profile, pull in some of the basic programs that you need in order to serve your population, a great way to do it electronically. We also want to make certain that we're protecting you as well. So we have discounted errors and admissions coverage for our agents, for our qualified agents. What's a qualified agent? Well, you got a contract with us. That's the qualification. This is a program that you own and protects you as an independent agent with whomever you're contracting through for different products. So this isn't necessarily a premier only carrier. You can bring in other carriers for a nominal upgrade and make certain that you protect yourself across the board for a number of different programs that you're offering in the insurance space. We also look to make certain that you maintain your licenses through a discounted continuing education arrangement we have with a Web CE. We also have a way for you to create an enhanced benefit structure within your own portfolio products to help yourself. So this is a modified guarantee issued disability income program where you share in the commission a great way to add to your own benefit package. We talked about how this presentation is being recorded and will be sent to everyone who raised their hand with interest. We've done that with the vast majority of our past presentations. We'll do it as the new ones come through as well. But these include not only a marketing topic like today, utilizing the social media and the new normal to, to reach a portion of the market, but also some, some, pardon me, some things that help uh, clear up different types of uh, programs that are out there by type, by carrier, by product type. It also gives you a way to uh, sneak a peek at some different marketing presentations that are out there, all available 24-7 on our website at premiersmi.com, as said down here, or through our YouTube channel. We also want to make certain that you fully understand the value that's being delivered by Medicare Center. It's available without cost to our agents. It's a singular sign-on, a log-on, where you have access to not only a CRM, but three different quoting engines powered by Connexure, Sunfire, and CSG. So you're looking at uh, a way of communicating effectively and compliantly through the use of the tools that enable you to put the information out on these topics of interest. So Medicare Advantage, PDP programs, Medicare supplements, different ancillary products can all be addressed through this system. It's available to you without cost. And it includes a way for you to cross sell. One of the tools in there, the CSG piece, enables you to layer on different product available uh, through the system, ancillary product, to add to the base medical that a, a person has chosen, either through you or someone else. And because of the CRM capability, you can mine that information throughout the year um, with the folks that, who have detail within the system. Because different programs do pay you differently, we also want to make certain that you have a spot you can go to and make certain that you're not missing out on anything, that you're being fully compensated for your activities. So we have a, a, a subsection on our website that draws in the different incentive programs from the carrier uh, extras, the monies that may be available through marketing or bonus programs, or even the carrier trips, the year-long programs or specific uh, seasonal uh, incentives that give you an opportunity to um, earn the right to travel. And we're seeing, you know, obviously that become more effective, but they also qualify you for uh, the premier incentive programs as well, which last year was going to be a cruise turned into cash simply because there wasn't a lot of cruising going on last year. So it gives us the opportunity to maximize the value of the different pieces that are out there. And we do so to help you reach the population that you're out there to reach. So uh, you have contact lists available through us. You have programs out there that help you market the different community-based programs straight from retail all the way through providers of the benefits that we're offering through the programs that are there and other centers of influence in the community, such as faith-based organizations, too. Many of the carriers, particularly in the Medicare Advantage market, if you worked with them 
throughout AEP. They may also have carrier generated prospects. Some of the other companies do that as well. We do offer internet leads and direct mail support with the direct mail support being based on productivity. Um, so many apps per month discounts this into where you're doing a mail campaign on a consistent basis. Think of it, it's like your exercise program. You do it once a week or so, eh, not too often, and eh, you feel a bit of the pain, you don't see a lot of the results. Do it consistently, that's where you see the real uh, payback come through a tried and true way of getting in front of individuals. But because it isn't necessarily the quickest of turnarounds, sometimes you wanna use these same lead vendors that we are uh, partnering with to deliver that mail support to deliver perhaps just the responses. Um, you, you direct a campaign, obviously, the leads you get back, the, the partners we have, the vendors we have, all have CRMs that, boom, you get that the same day. If you're purchasing a return mail lead, um, you have the opportunity to create more flexibility perhaps in your budget on short term, but it may not be quite as fresh. So we want to make certain that either of these sources that are available for us to utilize as part of your marketing campaign, we realize that uh, the price can vary and that perhaps it gives us an opportunity to fill in the blanks in many circumstances. We already talked about, to a degree, reference the Facebook lead program that we have available. If you are interested in this, this is something um, that needs to be discussed with your marketer within Premier. We lay all this out quite simply because we're in a new normal too. Uh, our organization has been really dependent upon telephonic response in many circumstances, e-blast, we use everything else. We're trying different things to communicate with you as well and with the general population that we serve in order to be of a great asset to you. And so by combining our efforts, we're able then to drive additional business, and we want your business as well and ask for it. So if these programs are part of an interest in creating an addition to your personal marketing plan, it's a big thing for you to do like John Wayne said in the Cowboys, burn in daylight, put it in play. Remember one of the slides mentioned, you don't have to have it all completely mapped out to start it. Putting your toe in the water, well, at least tells you how cold the pool is. You gotta dive in after a bit, but committing to using these systems can be of great value to you. And you can do so through conversations with us. We can be reached actually through our toll free number 1-800-365-8208 or respond to the email that's gonna come out after our recording of this uploads or uh, go on our website, premiersmi.com, and see how we can talk about the different programs that uh, are available to you through our organization. So as we look at some of the questions as we close today, is there a link that describes the Facebook lead program? Melody, thank you for that. We're gonna make certain that that comes as part of the follow-up, that specific link, so you can reach out and touch that system so to speak, and make certain that it is uh, uh, the back and forth of it, you know exactly what it's going to be. So all that said, let's see, I have two other questions. We covered them through the course of the presentation. Thanks for bearing with me for that. Remember, the journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. I'm gonna butcher that adage most certainly, but in order for this to work, you gotta start. And we're asking to help you along that way. So until we have those conversations and we're able to visit again, we wanna thank you for the time that you invested with us today. We're at an hour. Um, if you've worked with us in the past, thank you for that association. We thank you for your business. We wanna make certain that we can do whatever we can do to drive your success because that's our shared success as well. So all that said and done, until we're able to visit in the very near future, hey, we wish you good selling. Thanks so very much, and we'll talk to you soon.